uh, on choline. Any benefits on supplementation? Many here would get from the diet alone. Thoughts on forms and dosages? Look, I tend to um, uh, not recommend choline supplementation until somebody actually needs it. So you should be getting sufficient choline from, I mean, I do have a number of videos on choline. You can Google them and it actually shows the dosages, the amount in the actual animal foods. And most people get more than enough. Choline supplementation should only be used for people that have got gallbladder issues, that have got really um, genetics like I have. So I eat more eggs and tend to supplement if they have certain medical conditions that require um, more choline. So it really depends on the circumstances. And when people ask me um, and give me a bit of a rundown on their circumstances and stuff like that, then I usually say to them, and it, usually they leave a comment with, or they email me, and currently the email thing is shut down. Um, I've overloaded it deliberately. Um, once I've sorted out what I need to sort out, I'm going to basically... Uh, next weekend, delete everything in there. So if I haven't replied to you, you'll have to reply with a new email. So sorry, but it's just I need to declutter it all and blow it all away and then just reset. So I've I did that deliberately because I had a whole lot of issues that I had to deal with in my own personal life um, relating to people close to me. So those things are being all, all sorted out. Um, and I can sort of now get back into my normal routine. So that's what's happening um, without giving too much of my personal details away in that regard. But uh, so, yeah, so the thing is, people will ask me, they'll, they'll tell me their conditions or they'll have to, they've done genetic tests or they've noticed, um, you know, I'm on a carnivore diet and I'm getting fatty liver. Well, if you're getting fatty liver, I think you should basically consider um, choline because you may have the genetics that, you know, and you need more choline. So whether you eat a bit of liver with it, with more eggs or whether you, um, you know, eat foods that are high in choline and there is that video so people can go and took a, take a look at it. Uh, Scotty, if uh, Scotty's here, I've noticed one of my... Um, moderator so if you wouldn't mind posting that video on choline then it has also the in the description it has um, from that site it actually has all the choline sort of uh, foods and stuff like that that'd be helpful um, if you can't remember it off the top of your head just tell me you can't and I'll I'll try and find it if necessary but yeah so really Choline, we should not go over four grams um, because the, while some people can tolerate more than four grams, some people seem to get nausea and a, and a number of symptoms. So there seems to be a bit of a genetic threshold. Exactly where there is, we don't have robust research. We just, People just say, uh, you know, this is, thanks, Scotty. They, they'll argue that, um, that you need this amount or that amount and all that. And I'm going, well, show me the evidence. It's a lot, a lot of the guidelines. There isn't really robust research. It's sort of what is the general level in the population, the average, and that keeps on changing and they keep on changing sort of the, the metrics. Um, what doesn't kill you seems to be the, the base level that they consider okay. And I'm going, well, that's a bit illogical, but, you know, this is the modern world we live in. There is no, they can't argue from a, you know, from a scientific experimental position, as Bart would say, because they don't have any. That's the problem. Um, all we have is some mechanistic studies and some short-term randomised control studies, and they tend to indicate an animal-based diet is best, and the mechanistic studies just provide a bit of illumination in understanding how certain pathways work. You know, that it is quite poor. You know, 99% of the research out there is piss poor. And even the ex-head of the 
New England Journal of Medicine when she resigned. She said she was disgusted that most of the actual studies were so poor, you know, but, you know, as long as they're getting funding from the food and um, uh, big pharma, it seems that uh, the, the party goes on for those sort of people. But getting back to your question, I would say that I tend to supplement. If I'm not having any eggs, you know, um, not having any liver or eggs, I usually supplement about a gram. If I, if you're dealing with, you know, you know, excess estrogen or excess um, or mold exposure or whatever it is, you may need to take two or three grams in order to methylate away a lot of those toxins out of your system. And then you'd have to also take calcium D glutarate to sort of make sure that it gets out of the system. Um, because it actually works synergistically. So it depends on the circumstance of the person. Um, I would say if you don't have the genetics, then four or, four or six eggs a day should give you more than enough because uh, each egg has 149 point, like a large egg, 140... Run about 149.7, I think it is, uh, milligrams. So if you do that with times four eggs, that's about 598.8, which sort of the, for an adult, is 550. So just four eggs will give you a whole daily dose. Plus meat also has, um, so if you eat quite a lot of meat, you'll probably get the same amount. So you're pretty much done. Most carnivores, if they eat, you know, four, four to six eggs, because if you basically, let's say we go for six eggs, which is what I have a day, um, so I have a bit a bit more than, than most people, so I have six eggs a day, which is 898.2 milligrams, plus the meat, I get way over a gram, is what I need, about a gram, so double the, more than du slightly double the RDI, uh, because of my genetics so i usually have six eggs a bit of uh, quite a bit of meat um, in one meal and i usually get my uh, requirements based on my genetics so it's n so really most people do not need choline supplementation um even when they've got the genetics if they're eating sufficient i just sometimes get sick and tired of eating so many eggs um constantly i you know and i'll may supplement and I've got my supplement now. Is, I have to check the date to make sure that it hasn't gone out of date. But it usually lasts for a long time. I get one that actually makes sure that it's got quite a few years into it because I'm only doing one gram at most. I may, you know, if I've been exposed to anything, I may take two, but generally I just do one gram. Dad's doing the same thing, one gram, because he doesn't need enough eggs. He's sort of up his eggs a bit now. He's got similar genetics to me. Uh, so he's doing about two, three eggs sometimes. So I just give him a gram just to cover to make sure that he's getting enough because he doesn't eat like mega amounts of meat. Um, that's why he gets, you know, the other supplements like leucine. And um, it's just, you know, older people just don't do it and you can't force them. So I try to force protein synthesis to maintain strong bones and muscles because that's my only solution with my dad. You know, I can't force him to basically eat more meat and eggs. Um, it's just the way it is. So it depends on the circumstances in that regard. But I would never go over four, um, and I'd keep it at max, even if somebody's dealing with, you know, excess xenoestrogens. Um, and that's the other thing. And also to, you know, to the other, other reason is if you go and do a test and you've got low folate levels well the way to spare folate and b12 is to basically supplement choline because choline goes directly into the methionine cycle and you know pretty much the um, choline betaine converts homocysteine back to methionine and spares the fol the folate cycle from having to do a lot of work and so you're sparing folate, you're sparing B12 for other biological functions, including bone. Bones require also B12. It's not only the brain and other things like that. So, yeah, it's one way of actually, 
I use choline supplementation to fix my dad's pernicious anemia a decade ago. So, you know, he'd gone to Vedro on me at the time. Yes, again, it's a problem with a lot of older people. They think going Vedro, they'll live longer. No, you only become osteoporotic and sarcopenic. Not a good idea. Frail, that is. <laughs> So that's what he did. Anyway. Ah, and uh, just, you know, just a stock standard stuff. The, you know, the B-trait type, you know, just a stock standard. You don't have to get anything fancy. Um, you know, the fancy stuff, even the, the stock standard stuff, if it's a clean one, yeah, and it's got no fillers, it's just pure choline, not a problem. Um wouldn't worry too much and just do one gram and if you have a reason like you're exposed to xenoestrogens maybe from your work environment maybe do two uh, so depends <laughs>